Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, founder of Fitness Education Seminars, the movement-based solution to the healthcare crisis, and author of the Corrective Exercise Solutions to Common Hip and Shoulder Dysfunction. Thank you so much for tuning in to this webinar series on Corrective Exercise Solutions. In this edition, we're going to continue our discussion of Corrective Exercise Solutions by looking at the best corrective exercise patterns to improve the function of the shoulder and upper extremity. And later in this webinar, I'm going to share with you how you can get your hands on one of the most valuable resources you need if you are looking to become a specialist in corrective exercise and help more of your clients achieve their health and fitness goals. So let's get started. My favorite poet is Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he said, I wish to say what I think and feel today with the proviso that tomorrow perhaps I should contradict it all. And again, one point at a time, I was part of the problem. I would teach my clients, like this client in the image to the right, I would teach my clients how to squeeze down and back with their shoulder blades and hyperextend and lift their chest up, creating hyperextension at the thoracolumbar junction. Again, it helped some people, but I noticed more and more of my people were having more dysfunction with these cues. So I want to share with you in this webinar how you can actually improve how you cue your clients and how you can dramatically change function in your clients without using cues like squeezing down and back and lifting your chest up. So what's the number one myth surrounding scapular stability? Number one myth is people have weak retractors. So, we let, so in our industry we have a lot of people that teach down and back, squeeze, Y's, T's, W's, and all the, all the other, other exercises that are designed to create scapular adduction or retraction, which is basically just squeezing down and back. What is the real problem if weak retractors like rhomboids, mid traps, low traps aren't the problem? Well, the real problem is motor control. Just like we saw with the glutes, the big issue with the glutes isn't weakness, it's a motor control issue. How, do you can, how can you tell if your client is experiencing a motor control problem? Well, there's a couple easy signs to look for. Number one sign is something I came up with, the levator scapula sign. And it's actually a sign of the levator scapula sticking out of the neck, meaning the client is not able to stabilize around the thoracic cage, so she's not stabilizing down here with her serratus and low trap and lats and rhomboids and mid-trap. Her scapula is going up and over her rib cage, and you see this prominent levator scapula coming off a superior angle and going into the neck. So if you see this or and if, and or if you palpate your client's neck and they have ropiness and tightness in their neck as they're doing push downs, bicep curls, lat pull downs, push ups, you know they are not stabilizing their scapula properly. They're using their neck as a point of stabilization, and your neck should not be the point of stabilization for your scapula. What's another sign that your client has poor scapular stabilization and motor control? You'll see clients with downward rotation. You see in the in this client's left scapula, downward rotation. If the inferior angle is closer to the midline than the superior angle of scapula, she's in downward rotation. You can see she's in downward rotation on both sides, and that's where you get the prominent lower inferior border, and we also we just say that she's winging. But it's, it's, it's much more than just winging. It's actually downward rotation, and she actually has, actually on this side, depression of her scapula. Her scapula is too low, and it's in downward rotation. This will create impingement type issues and motor control issues as her arm goes overhead and as she starts to load her shoulder and upper extremity. Last sign is poor eccentric control. So this is a client of mine. Take a look at what his, his scapula looked like. He goes up really nice, but as he comes back down, boom, scapula come down. Poor eccentric control. Goes up really nice, boom, comes down without good scapular control on this side. So again, what we see with these clients is even though they can get good upward rotation, they don't have good eccentric control. And that's why Y's, T's, and W's actually don't work and can contribute to this dysfunction because they teach this guy how to create more and more adduction. And you see he's got plenty of upper trap, mid trap, lower trap development. He doesn't need more development. He needs more motor control. So what about popular scapular stabilization exercises? We mentioned a couple and why they don't work. What about push-up pluses? And if you look at a lot of the literature, they'll say, well, the push-up plus creates the most amount of serratus anterior activation. We know we need more, most of our clients need more serratus anterior activation, but again, it's not a strength issue, it's a motor control issue. So here's what it looks like when a client has poor motor control, especially during a scapular push-up. His trainer told him to do scapular push-ups and push-up plus, and it's trying to push through. And you can see, again, downward rotation, poor 
control of the scapula or the thorax on the top of the scapula, and he's just dropping and hanging off his soft tissue structures. So let's watch that one more time. Again, downward rotation of scapula, and he's just kind of hanging out. He's not even pushing through appropriately. Again, poor motor control. Again, in the study by, in the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery, 2010, they looked at the kinematics of the wall version of, of the push-up plus. So, so my client's doing the floor version, but they did it on their clients on the wall. And what they showed is the push-up plus actually creates an impingement type position because it doesn't get the scapula to come down and around the rib cage. So what do I mean by down and around? Well, in another study uh, that just actually came out in 2011, they looked at scapular positioning and movement in, in unimpaired shoulders, shoulder impingement clients, and clients that had glenohumeral instability. And what they found out was that the clients that had impingement and glenohumeral instability had decreased upward rotation, which we talked about already. We need that upward rotation motion. They had decreased ability to posteriorly tilt. So they had a decreased ability to posteriorly tilt that scapula on top of the thorax. And they also had a decreased ability to get that scapula into an upwardly rotated position. And they also had a decreased ability to externally rotate. And, if, and again, if we're looking from top down, the ability to externally rotate is this ability to get the scapula to sit flat against the thorax. Again, they're not strength issues, they're motor control issues. So what can we do to help our clients get better motor control? Well, there's a couple of key patterns. Before we get to the patterns, let's look at the primary function of our scapular stabilizers. Number one, stabilization. We need to teach those scapular stabilizers how to stabilize the scapula on the thorax and the thorax on the scapula not how to move it, which wise T's and W's, push up plus, they're all mobility exercises. Our clients don't need more mobility generally. They need more stability. And we call this the wrap or protraction function. You see my fingers here? What I'm trying to get the client to do is understand how to get the scapula to come down, posteriorly tilt, depress slightly, and but essentially upwardly rotate. And again, Shirley Sermon says the scapula must become mid-thorax. Most of our clients are not getting that scapula to come mid-thorax and overhead type motion. So again, we need upward rotation. We need posterior tilting and we need slight amount of depression. Most of our clients actually are already too depressed. We do have clients that are elevated, but many of our clients with scapular problems, especially impingement problems, have too much scapular depression. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the patterns on how we're gonna help achieve these three important functions. The first and most important pattern that I like to use is upward rotation with posterior tilt. We use this with all our clients and we teach it in our IMS program. What we're gonna do is have the client side lie, support her head on a pillow or some kind of towel. She'll put her arm, shoulder at 90-90, 90 degrees of uh, elbow flexion, 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. She's gonna push that elbow down into the table. She's gonna activate her core. Her scapula is gonna come down and around her thorax. She's gonna to try to feel as if she's pulling herself forward over this arm here. So we're using this as the stable position and we're trying to move the thorax over top the scapula. From behind, you can see me activate. I'm gonna help her activate. I'm gonna put my thumb right in the inferior angle. I'm gonna push up and in. So I'm gonna push her into a bad position so she has a kinesthetic cue to push down and out. So again, this is the backside of what's happening and she's gonna to try to pull herself and you should see her neck go long as she activates the scapular depressors, upward rotators, and posterior tilters. Mostly we're talking about the lats, lower trap, upper trap, and serratus anterior. The next pattern we love to use is prone lengthening. So again, you're gonna see the client, she's gonna put her hands almost in a push-up type position. She's gonna do slight chin flexion to activate the deep neck flexors. She's gonna pull with her hands back. So she's gonna, she's gonna act as if she's pulling herself back into, or actually pulling herself forward, almost like she's trying to creep along this table. And at the same time, she's gonna pull the shoulder blades down and around the rib cage. Again, the important function of slight depression, upward rotation, and posterior tilting, activating the serratus anterior, the low trap, the upper trap, and the lats. I'm gonna cue her, help cue her, by pushing her up and in. So she's gonna pull herself long, and I'm gonna push her up and in, so she's gonna, it's gonna make it easier for her to activate and wrap the scapula around the thorax. And now she can start to create thoracic extension and neck lengthening by using her scapular stabilizers. 
very, very effective pattern for improving scapular function, shoulder function, and thoracic lengthening and neck lengthening. We also have to cue her posture many times. And here in this picture, you can see I'm using both my hands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hands in front of her shoulder and a hand behind her shoulder. With my bottom hand, my left hand, the hand with a watch, I'm pulling her scapula down and around the thorax. And with my upper hand, I'm putting her into a posterior tilt and slight elevated position because she's, she tends to be a little bit more um, downwardly rotated. So, so I'll give her just a slight, slight amount of upper, upward rotation and elevation. But I'm really pulling that scapula down and around, down and around the scapula, or sorry, down and, I'm pulling the scapula down and around the thorax to improve the positioning. And I've already done it on this side. You can see a nice positioning here. She gets wide and long through her shoulders here. And that's the key. You need to be wide through the shoulders or long through the shoulders, not pinching the shoulder blades down and back like too many of our clients are cued to do. So what do you do to integrate it in? I'm gonna show you a couple bad reps and I'll show you a couple good reps. So here's what happens with, with some clients are cued to lift the chest up and then, and then they protract and then they retract then they pull. They protract. You see me protracting, and then I retract and pull. Again, this creates scapular dyskinesia or scapular instability, or I should say lack of control, proper control, as a client does a pattern, and I'm pulling myself into thoracolumbar hyperextension. Now I'm going to stabilize on one side. I'm going to set my scapula in the right position. I'm going to stay long through this pattern, and I'm going to pull without losing scapular control. That's the function of our scapular stabilizers during a pulling pattern. During a pushing pattern, it's going to be just the opposite. But again, I'm going to have scapular control as I do my pattern. I'm going to show you a couple bad reps first. You can see as I go into my pushing pattern, I'm going to let my scapula just drop back. My thorax is all over the place. I'm not stable. I have no point of stability here. I'm just dropping the scapula way back without control. Now I'm going to stabilize on the, on the contralateral side. I'm going to set my scapula into the proper position. And now you see much better thorax control. I have much better core activation. And now I can drive that scapula, drive that arm off a nice stable scapular thoracic junction. And I stay nice and long through my spine. And I have even better control through my lower extremity. So conclusion. What we really want to do to improve scapular stabilization is improve upper rotation and posterior tilting. Those are the key movements we need to improve function of the scapular thoracic articulation. We need to give them proper cueing. We do not want them to squeeze down and back. We do not want them to pack the shoulder. We do not want them to depress the shoulder blades. We want to teach them how to get the proper lengthening width through the shoulders and get the proper length through their spine, the cervical spine, and the thoracic spine, and avoid cues like squeezing down and back. There is, however, a time when you want to squeeze down and back. Look at this guy. As he's water skiing and he loses his control of going down and back with the scapula, boom, he's about to face plant. If you're looking for additional resources, check out our website, fitnesseducationseminars.com. We have free videos, including many of these patterns you saw in this, in this webinar, including many other free videos that you can get on our site. Without signing up, all you do is go to our, our website. Click on the link that says free videos. You can see it right here. And we have all these videos that are listed under different components. And again, look on the shoulder exercises and you'll find a lot of these patterns that we talked about. Again, sign up for our newsletter. We send out free videos and update our blog every couple of weeks. So look for all the great information. So as soon as I learn information I'll, and I use it and prove that it works on my clients and my patients, I share it with you guys. So look, keep looking for updates. If you're looking for additional resources, check out my new book. Again, you can get that through our website where we look at popular scapular stabilization exercises and why we choose to use some of the patterns we use in this book here. So we'll show you all the corrective exercise patterns, how to set the person up, how to put the client in the best position to improve that scapular posterior tilting and upper rotation, how to progress them into pushing and pulling and integrated patterns so the clients can achieve their health and fitness goals, and we'll also even look at how the T-spine and neck influence the scapula and how to actually look for instability in the thoracic spine and neck because that has a huge impact on scapular and upper extremity functions. 
So this has been Dr. Evan Oser. Thank you again for tuning into this webinar. I hope it has served you in your goal of becoming the specialist your clients need and want.